Defending Trump is incredibly scary. Why? Because it's incredibly easy, that's why. It shouldn't be easy to defend such a flawed human. But it is, because those who attack him are not just equally flawed humans, like the rest of us, Trump included, but downright pathologically mental. <sighs> Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Alright, let's rub some feathers the wrong way a bit, I'll try to keep it short. It is surreal that after so much time after the election, everyone is still kept into conversations that quite literally have no meaning. Just a few days ago, the New York Times, a former newspaper, was still counting Trump's inauguration crowds. I mean, really, who cares about that? A serious question. The hardline Trump partisans have already made up their minds and believe the crowd was huge. The hardline Democrat partisans have already made up their minds and believe the crowd was minuscule. Now, they're both wrong, but they won't change their position anytime soon, if ever. The rest of us just shrugged it off in the who cares category. Yes, it was smaller than Obama's, but much bigger than what the cathedral media wanted to make it be. Move on already, who cares? The qualities, the faults and the performances of a president are not assessed by the size of the crowd at the inauguration. Please stop being so silly. The only ones really still caring about this are the mentally damaged weirdos in the cathedral media. And the same goes with other topics, such as the relentless conspiracy theory about Trump's connections with Russia. For some reason, we're supposed to believe that a guy who is in cahoots with the Kremlin would also appoint a UN ambassador that deals with Russia much better than the previous Obama appointee, or that he'd appoint General Mattis. And we're supposed to believe that because a fake news website like BuzzFeed produced a fake dossier that told a story so uh, wild that we could make a very good fiction movie on it. I mean, this pretty much confirms what I predicted in my Duginism video. Whenever the left picks up a serious topic, and the danger of Duginist ideology and Russian subversion is a very serious and real subject, but now that the left learned about it, they turned it into a mockery. This shows the short-sightedness of leftists first and foremost, because in doing so, they harm themselves whilst also harming the rest of the civilized world. Nobody wins. Well, except for the Kremlin, all bite mildly. Look. I really want to get on to disagreeing with Trump and kickstart the critical machine, because that's how politics works. The campaign is over, the honeymoon is over, we should get on to the trenches and do the work of pushing new stuff into the culture and keep Trump on a conservative track. That's how politics are supposed to work. And there are areas where the Trump administration can and should be criticized. The push to crack down on states who legalized marijuana is one stupid move on the pipeline in the Trump administration. The poor management of the otherwise minuscule crisis blown out of proportion by the media over Michael Flynn is another example where the administration can indeed be criticized. The intentions on trade deals what, that are largely autistic and anti-capitalist are also something that can and should be criticized. The whole automatic triggering of renegotiation whenever there is a trade deficit, for instance, is just pure lunacy. But we don't get to talk about that. The drug thing is indeed covered, albeit poorly, by, the P by PJ Media, but at least it is covered. The others are covered hysterically by the Cathedral Media, or ignored. Ignored in favor of witchcraft and left-wing biology denialism. No, seriously, the BBC wrote over the weekend about how witches and self-identified magical thinkers are preparing a spell to oust Trump from office. <laughs> and then 
the BBC complains about extremism when people like me call them the British Bullshit Corporation and dismiss them outright. I mean, at the very least, the Daily Mail is honest about being a clickbait website and a tabloid. We don't expect much from them. But the BBC professes to be above that. Oh, did, uh, did I mention that earlier this year the BBC was also, uh, well, defending pedophiles? When not talking about witchcraft, the cathedral media talked to us about how grave in danger are the trannies now because of Trump. Why? Because Trump relinquished the federal authority over the bathrooms of schools. <laughs> no, seriously, that's literally all he did. He basically said, look, it's not the business of the federal government to police these things. Let individuals, local institutions, local communities and states make their own rules if they really want and need them. The federal government has no business in this. How is that a bad thing? Even avowed Never Trumper David French of the avowed Never Trump publication National Review had to describe this in the following terms, quote, Lost in most of the coverage of President Trump's decision to rescind the Obama administration's transgender mandates is a fundamental legal reality. The Trump administration just relinquished federal authority over gender identity policy in the nation's federally funded schools and colleges. In other words, Trump was less authoritarian than Obama." Unquote. Meanwhile, over at Pravda on Hudson, the headline is Trump will lose the fight over bathrooms for transgender students. What fight? The former newspaper author does say in the body of the article, quote, in a one and a half page letter, the government unceremoniously retreated from a position, unquote. Well, if the government retreated from a position and reverted to the previous 200 plus years situation in which the government holds no position one way or the other, how is that a fight? The whole thing is just pure hysteria. And on this whole background of pure insanity came the move to avoid inviting the worst purveyors of fake news. The New York Times, a former newspaper, the LA Times, allegedly a newspaper, BuzzFeed, a putrid clickhole, CNN, a former news network, and Politico, who got to stay out of a briefing by press secretary Sean Spicer. Infuriated by this, the Time magazine and the Associated Press also refused to participate. Apparently, that's a bad thing. Apparently, that's just as bad as throwing them in jail. Eh, really? Really? So BuzzFeed can literally manufacture news about Donald Trump and knowingly print falsehoods repeatedly. And when Donald Trump, well, actually Sean Spicer, but anyway, when the administration says, hold on a second, this briefing, you're out. The broadcast, the broadcast is live on the internet. Take it from there. I'll skip inviting you. That's suddenly the end of the world. Give me a fucking break. Besides. It was a briefing, not a press conference. Briefings have no, co no questions. Quite frankly, in the case of briefings, the White House should simply broadcast them on YouTube and place them under Creative Commons and get done with it. Then everyone can watch it there, rebroadcast it, comment on it, edit it, do whatever the hell they want with it. Why do all the outlets have to be there physically if no questions are taken anyway? Serious question. When it's a press conference, it makes sense to have outlets and representatives there, although even in that case, this particular White House seems to be more in touch with the current century and they take Skype questions as well from smaller outlets across the country, which is good. But anyway, we're too early in this century to ask the whole legacy media to adopt technology like that. But on briefings? Surely this can already be done today broadcast on all social media and get over with it. It would also cost less since no one would uh, have to clean the room after the, uh, after the mess left there by the reporters and they do leave a tremendous mess. 
but besides the moral arguments for why this is justified and besides the legal arguments for why this is perfectly legal and nothing to do with the First Amendment since nowhere in the First Amendment says anything about the press secretary shall kick no news outlets no matter how fake out from a briefing. Besides all of these, the biggest issue is that the media keeps on acting as a class and then expect everyone else not to notice. For instance, even right-wing outlet PJ Media printed the outright fal falsehood that, quote, the unprecedented action caused Time Magazine and the Associated Press to turn down the invita invitation to attend in protest, unquote. Except it's not unprecedented. In 2010, the Obama administration Treasury Secretary banned Fox News from a series of interviews, which is worse than a briefing. I mean, nobody asks questions in briefings, so in a way, everyone is silenced already in briefings. The New York Times pr printed the same falsehood, quote, Nothing like this has ever happened at the White House in our long history of covering multiple administrations of different parties, unquote. This is simply not true, and Trump knows it. He also probably knows that there is a razor-thin split in the public over who is more trustworthy the press or the White House. Some polls show 45 to, 52 for, uh, 45 to 42 for Trump, others show 44 to 42 for the media. Either way, this is a balanced fight. But you wouldn't know that if you are reading the New York Times or, heaven forbid, watching the CNN. Anyway, one last thing. Remember, this is the same media that is upset that Trump is beating them at their own narrative. Here, listen to this right from the horse's mouth. Exactly. That is, that's exactly what I hear. What Yamish just said is what I hear from all the Trump supporters that I talk to who were Trump voters and are still Trump supporters. They go, yeah, you guys are going crazy. He's doing, what are you so surprised about? He's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. Well, and I think that the dangerous, you know, edges here are that he's trying to undermine the media, trying to make up his own facts. And it could be that while unemployment and uh, the, the economy worsens, he could have undermined the messaging so much that he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is the that is our you, job. Yeah. If you look at the issues. Uh he can actually control right. uh, exactly what people think. And that if, is, the, that is our you, job. Yeah. So, are we clear? This class of people see themselves as being the anointed ones to tell everyone else what to think. And Trump says, screw you, I'll broadcast directly to the people and ignore what you say. Of course they're pissed. And this is why I hate all of this, because I'm compelled by common sense to side with Trump as a baseline. And I don't want that. I wanted Trump to win, I'm glad that he won, but I'm, on, I'm not on the old Trump God Emperor train. But until further notice, in the dispute between Trump and the media, I have to side with Trump, because he is less imperfect than the media. Sure, he exaggerated about his inaugural crowds and sometimes he appears to believe weird conspiracies, but the media believes he peed in Russian beds to take revenge on Obama. <laughs> the media believes witchcraft news are political news. The media believes that nothing is wrong in Sweden, even though Swedish elected officials have come out one by one saying that Trump is right. And of course he's right. Oh, speaking of Sweden, the Huffington Post published a very good story about how right Trump is about Sweden, but then seven hours later they deleted it. I mean, heaven forbid some truth stays printed on the HuffPo website. What has uh, <clears throat> space on the Huffington Post is quite literally manufactured news where they sent one of their own staff writers masquerading as an independent to try to get CPAC attendees to wave Russian flags for a few seconds so he can get his pictures right and then uh, tell a nice story for the conspiracies left. When that failed, they changed the story to say, well, it was just a prank. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, sure, it was just a prank. <sighs> oh, and let's not forget, 
how many figures of the cathedral media called for his assassination very openly. This idea that Trump should just take it is simply unreasonable. Donald Trump, just like Hussein Obama, is a narcissist. Expecting no reaction is to live in a fantasy world. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to say. I'm just getting tired of all of this hyperbole. No, Trump is not Trump not inviting your sorry fake news lot to a briefing is not censorship. Being in the briefing group is a privilege. Trump just checked your privilege. <laughs> And good for him. I mean, BuzzFeed is cancer. The idea that such a purulent latrin is on the permanent role of the White House is offensive per se. I mean, if that's the standard, then get the onion in there. It's far more credible than BuzzFeed. Anyway, with all of that being said, thank you for watching and I'll be back with more serious and less ranty content very soon. I just had to get this off my chest. See you around on Freedom Alternative.